The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, Volume 1. Seiki Sand Cover Art by Hanakoto. This is exactly why you must tidy up, because otherwise things like this are bound to happen. The instant a small ah escaped Mahiru's mouth. A main dived across the room, aiming for the spot where he thought Mahiru would most likely fall. A light, sweet fragrance mixed with the musty smell of the dust that had been kicked up. In the panic, a main felt an innocence in her, and her pure smile was beautiful enough to take his breath away. She was really exceptionally cute. Throw it away? I would never do such a cruel thing. I'll treasure it. You don't want any? No. Well, um, if it's all right, I guess I'll have some, but, uh. Chapter 1 Meeting an Angel What are you doing? The first time a main Fujimiya spoke to Mahirashina was when he caught sight of her sitting on a swing in the park, in the middle of the pouring rain. This was a main's first year as a high school student. He'd recently begun living alone in a nearby apartment building. Little did he know when he first moved in that his next-door neighbor was a veritable angel on earth. Of course, calling her an angel was just a figure of speech, but Mahirashina was such a beautiful, sweet girl that the comparison seemed entirely fitting. Her straight, well-groomed, flaxen hair was always silky smooth and lustrous. The girl's pale, milky-white skin was always soft, as if it had never been anything less than perfect. From her shapely nose and large eyes rimmed with long eyelashes to her delicate, dewy pink lips, every part of her looked like it had been sculpted by the practiced hand of a true master. Amain went to the same high school as Mahiru and was in the same grade, so he'd heard plenty about her. Mostly, people talked about her beauty or how she was accomplished in both academics and sports. As it happened, Mahiru always got the top score on exams and was a real ace in gym class, too. Amain was in a different class, so he didn't know all the details, but if the rumors were anything to judge by, Mahiru was some kind of superhuman being. Truly, she seemed without a flaw attractive in face and figure and an excellent student. Perhaps most surprising was that she wasn't the least bit stuck up about it. With her quiet, modest personality, it was no wonder she was so popular. Living next door to such a beautiful girl would have gotten most boys practically salivating at the mere thought. Amain, however, didn't intend to make a fuss over her or try to get too close. He certainly wouldn't deny that Mahirashina was beautiful but she had never been more than a neighbor to him. There hadn't really been any opportunities for them to talk, and not once did he consider approaching her himself. If they did somehow become involved in some fashion, it would definitely make a lot of other boys jealous, and that'd be trouble. Amain knew it was better to remain amicable next-door neighbors and avoid the wrath of her other admirers. It was possible to appreciate a charming girl without falling in love with her, after all. Amain recognized that Mahiro was the kind of girl best cherished from afar and had contented himself with existing in her life as only her neighbor. Thus, when Amain caught sight of her looking lost in thought and alone in the pouring rain without an umbrella, he couldn't help but stop and stare, wondering what she might be doing. The downpour was heavy enough to send most everyone else scurrying home, but there she was, sitting all by herself on a swing in the park, between their school and their apartment building. What is she doing in the rain? Amain wondered. Everything was gloomy beneath the darkened sky, and the rain, relentless since that morning, only made it even more difficult to see. Mahira's conspicuous flaxen hair and her school uniform made it impossible to miss her, however, even veiled by the dismal weather. Amain did not know why she was sitting there without an umbrella, letting herself get soaked. Mahira didn't appear to be waiting for someone, nor did she seem at all concerned by the rain. As far as Amain could tell, Mahira was simply staring off into the distance. Her face was tilted slightly upward, and though she was always pale, her complexion appeared downright pallid. If she wasn't careful, she was sure to catch a cold, but even so, Mahira sat there quietly, not making any move to head home. If she's content to sit there, it probably isn't my place to interfere, a main thought as he made his way quickly past the park. He took one last look and could see that Mahira's face was screwed up as if she might cry. A main scratched his head nervously. He wasn't really looking to make any kind of connection with her or anything, 
but it seemed wrong to him to ignore another person who was making such a pained expression. What are you doing? When he called out to her in the bluntest voice possible, trying to convey that he was not a threat, she tossed her long hair, now heavy with water, and looked at him. Mahira's face was as lovely as ever. Even wet with rain, its radiance was not dulled. In fact, every droplet only seemed to enhance her elegant features. One could say she was dripping with beauty. She stared at him with large, striking eyes. Mahira must have been vaguely aware of Amain as her next-door neighbor because they occasionally passed each other in the morning. However, the look in her caramel-colored eyes revealed that she was slightly guarded, someone she had never really spoken with had suddenly called out to her. Fujimiya? May I help you? Amain was rather shocked that Mahira had remembered his name, but at the same time, he also figured that this level of familiarity most likely wouldn't cause her to drop her guard. It was only to be expected that Mahira would raise her defenses when confronted by a stranger, even if he wasn't entirely unknown. She probably didn't want much to do with the opposite sex. It certainly seemed like she received plenty of romantic advances from the boys at school, regardless of what year they were in. Would anyone have blamed Mahira for suspecting Amain of harboring an ulterior motive? I don't really need anything. I was just wondering why you were sitting in a place like this, all alone in the rain. Oh, you were? I'm grateful for your concern, but I'm here simply because I want to be. Don't worry about me. There was no edge of suspicion in Mahira's soft, listless voice, but it was also clear that she had no intention of opening up to a main. All right, suit yourself. It was clear that there was something going on with her, but she didn't seem to want a main to get involved, and he wasn't particularly inclined to pursue the matter any further. A main had only approached her on a whim. He'd simply been curious about her situation, that was all. It wasn't really his concern. If this was what she wanted to be doing, then that was just fine by him. Amain sensed the evanescent beauty regarding him with some suspicion. He was sure that Mahira was wondering why he'd even bothered speaking to her at all. Ah, I see, he offered in reply. Pressing the issue wouldn't get him anywhere, so Amain decided to withdraw. There was no shared history between them and perhaps that was for the best. The decision to leave her alone was an easy one. Even with a very good reason to depart, Amain still didn't think it seemed right to abandon her and thoroughly soak to boot. You'll catch a cold, so take this and go home. No need to bother giving it back. Deciding this would be the one and only time he meddled, Amain offered Mahiru his own umbrella. After all, he didn't want her to get sick or anything. Amain handed over the umbrella, or to put it more accurately, he gave her little choice but to accept. Without giving Mahiru a chance to reply, he turned away and took off. As he left the scene, Amain heard Mahiru calling to him. Whatever she was trying to say was too quiet and became drowned out by the rain. Amain didn't stop or turn around until the park was well behind him. He had cared enough about the girl possibly catching a cold to foist his umbrella on her, so he didn't feel that guilty about the fact that he had originally intended to ignore her altogether. At any rate, Mahira had refused his attempt to start a conversation, and Amain didn't intend to get any closer to her, either. After all, they had no connection to each other beyond this. Amain assured himself along those lines as he made his way home. Chapter 2 A Cold and Being Nursed by an Angel Amain, your sniffling's annoying. You're annoying. The next day, it was Amain who'd ended up with the cold. As his classmate and good friend Itsuki Akazawa had pointed out, Amain had been trying and failing to snort everything back up his nose. Trying to exhale only resulted in a terrible, wet, burbling sound. Amain wasn't sure whether it was because his nose was stuffed up or as a result of the cold itself, but a throbbing pain was spreading across the back of his head. He had taken some over-the-counter medicine, but it wasn't making a dent in his symptoms at all. Truly, Amain was a sad sight. His congested face twisted in nasal distress as he became well acquainted with the tissue. Itsuki looked at him, not with concern but exasperation. You were just fine yesterday, dude. I got caught in the rain. Ah. Chin up. Wait, didn't you have an umbrella yesterday? I gave it to someone. Naturally, there was no way that Amain could openly admit at school that he'd given it to Mahiru, so he kept things vague. Incidentally, he'd caught a glimpse of Mahiru earlier that day. She'd looked rather well, not ill at all. Amain couldn't help but laugh. Things had gotten completely flipped around. It was his own fault he'd neglected to warm up in the bath when he'd gotten home. Don't you think you were being a little too nice, lending out your umbrella? When it was pouring like that? Not really. Even if I did, no point complaining about it now. And who did you give it to anyway? Who was worth catching a cold? Eh, uh, 
a lost little kid? Can't really call her a kid with that body, though. Well, that and the fact that we're the same age. Although, her face did look kinda lost. Something clicked when Amain thought of the unusual encounter that way. Her expression had been exactly that of a lost little kid searching for their parent. Well, what a kind and upstanding gentleman you are. Itsuki laughed, unaware of the feelings bubbling up in Amain's chest as he recalled his meeting with Mahira the day before. But you know, even if you let someone borrow your umbrella or whatever, I bet your real problem was that you got lazy and didn't warm up afterward. That's why you're dying. How do you know that? Amain shot back. Well, you don't exactly take good care of yourself. That much was obvious the moment I saw your place. That's why you got sick, dumbass. Amain couldn't really argue with Itsuki's friendly ribbing. It was true that he didn't have the most wholesome lifestyle. To elaborate, he was bad at keeping things tidy, and his room was always a total mess. What's more, he subsisted on a diet of convenience store meals and nutritional supplements. The only time he had a decent meal was when he went out to eat once in a blue moon. Itsuki often grew frustrated with him, asking him how he could live like that. Knowing his friend kept such habits, Itsuki was not at all surprised that Amain had caught a cold overnight. You ought to go straight home today and rest up. Tomorrow's Saturday, so focus on getting better, Itsuki advised. I will, Amain replied. If only you had a nice girl to nurse you back to health like I do. Itsuki's lips curled up at his slight boast. Shut up. I don't need to hear that from a guy who's already got a girlfriend. Amain slapped away the box of tissues in front of him with the back of his hand, intensely irritated. As the day wore on, Amain's condition continued to deteriorate. The headache and runny nose were soon accompanied by throat pain and a fatigue that permeated his body. Though he single-mindedly hurried home after school, his body seemed to be losing its battle against the disease, and his pace was agonizingly slow. Eventually, he reached the lobby of his apartment building and forced his heavy legs to move him into the elevator, where he leaned against the wall. His breathing was rougher than usual, and he felt hot. Somehow, Amain had been able to endure it while he was at school, but he'd let his guard down now that home was in sight, and his condition had suddenly taken a turn for the worse. Even the peculiar floating sensation of riding in the elevator, normally not a concern, was now a source of dull agony. When the elevator eventually stopped on Amain's floor, he staggered out on leaden feet and began to shuffle toward his apartment. Almost immediately, he was confronted by a sight that caused him to seize up, however. Right there in front of him was the girl he had not expected to speak to again, her shimmery flaxen hair fluttering in the breeze. Her lovely features were full of life, her complexion vibrant and glowing. Even though she had definitely seemed the more likely candidate to catch a cold, she was healthy as could be. The benefits of her self-care were on vivid display. In her hands, Mahira was gripping the umbrella that Amain had forced on her the day before, neatly folded and closed. She must have come to return it, even though I told her she didn't have to, Amain reasoned. Really, you don't need to give it back, he said aloud. It's only natural to return something you borrowed, Mahira hesitated as soon as she got a good look at Amain's face. Um, you have a fever, don't you? It's got nothing to do with you. Amain frowned. This was perhaps the worst possible time to run into Mahira and all over a stupid umbrella, too. It was the kind of thing that shouldn't have been worth the trouble of returning. Mahira was smart, however, and was sure to quickly figure out how Amain had caught a cold. But you only became sick because you loaned me your umbrella, that's totally unrelated. Besides, I loaned it to you on a whim. It most certainly is related. The fact is that you caught a cold because I was out there in the rain. I said it's fine, really. It's not something you need to worry about. From Amain's perspective, he had done her the favor for his own self-satisfaction, and he didn't want her fussing over him now. However, Mahira didn't seem likely to just leave him be. Anxiety was written across her graceful features. So yeah, it's all good. See ya. Their back and forth was quickly growing taxing, so Amain decided to force his way out from under Mahira's questioning and concern. Swaying and staggering, he snatched the umbrella from her and pulled his keys out of his pocket. Everything was going fine, so far. Unfortunately, Amain fumbled quite a bit as he opened the door to his apartment. The moment he got it open, all the strength left his body. Perhaps the feeling of relief on finally entering his home was to blame for how his body unexpectedly keeled over toward the railing behind him. Although Amain was alarmed, he trusted that the railing was solid enough that it wouldn't break, and he wouldn't fall. Surely it would catch him, and he'd be fine. The impact will probably hurt a bit, but I guess there's no avoiding it, Amain thought, resigning himself to the pain. 
however, someone firmly took hold of his arm and hauled him back upright. Just as I thought, I can't leave you alone like this. Amain heard a fragile voice through his feverish haze. I'll repay your favor. Amain's head swam as he tried to make sense of the words, but he quickly gave up. Before he understood what was happening, Mahira had propped up his limp body and opened the door to his apartment. I'm going to help you inside. There's no other way, so please forgive the intrusion. Her tone of voice was quiet but left no room for argument. The fever-stricken Amain had no willpower to resist. He was pulled along, entering his apartment with a girl his own age for the first time in his life. It was true that he didn't have a girlfriend to nurse him back to health, but it seemed that an angel had descended to care for him instead. Thoroughly addled with fever, Amain had forgotten all about the sorry state of his place until it was too late. It wasn't until he saw the condition his home was in that he regretted ever letting Mahira enter. His apartment was spacious. It even had a spare room in addition to the bedroom and main living space. It was quite an extravagant dwelling for a person living alone, but Amain's parents were fairly well off and had decided on this place after considering the safety of the neighborhood and the convenience of nearby transportation. Amain had always thought that spending so much money on housing was unnecessary. The apartment was much too large for a single person anyway. Still, his parents had insisted, and he wasn't about to complain. Setting that aside, Amain did live alone, and he was a typical teenage boy. Things were not kept especially tidy. Various items were scattered all over the living room, and needless to say, there was the state of the bedroom. This is too pitiful to look at. The angel, Amain's savior, gave him a frank assessment of his living conditions. Such harshness was quite the contrast to her charming appearance. Amain could hardly argue it really was a sorry sight. If he'd known that he'd be bringing a stranger into his home, he might have moved some things, perhaps tidied up a bit, but it was too late for that now. Mahira let a sigh slip from her glossy lips, but undeterred, she set to moving Amain into his bedroom. They nearly tripped along the way, and Amain vowed to do some serious cleaning sometime soon. First, I'm going out for a moment, so please go ahead and change clothes before I get back. You can do that, right? Mahira asked. You're coming back. My conscience would never let me rest if I left you alone like this, even to sleep, Mahira responded bluntly, apparently feeling the same way now that Amain had felt toward her when she was soaking wet the day before. Amain did not argue any further. After Mahira left the room, he obediently did as he was told and started changing out of his school uniform. It's really a mess in here, there's nowhere to even step. How can anyone live like this? As he was changing, Amain heard an exasperated voice, quietly coming from the next room, and felt quite ashamed. After changing clothes, he went to lie down and must have fallen asleep without realizing it, because when he managed to lift his heavy eyelids again, flaxen hair was the first thing he saw. Following the hair, Amain looked up to see Mahira standing silently at his side, peering down at him. The whole scene felt like something out of a dream. What time is it? Amain asked, confused. Seven in the evening, Mahira answered matter-of-factly. You slept for several hours. As Amain propped himself up, Mahira handed him some sports drink that she had poured into a cup. He accepted it gratefully and brought it to his lips, then finally was able to take a look at his surroundings. Maybe it was because he had slept, but he felt just a little bit better than before. He realized that his head felt cool and pressed a hand to his forehead. When he did, his fingers registered a slightly starchy sensation, like cloth. There was a cooling sheet stuck to him. Amain was sure he didn't have any of those at his place, and he looked up at Mahiru. I brought it from home, she answered immediately. Amain had no cooling sheets in his apartment and no sports drinks, either. Mahiru must have brought that over as well. Thank you. Sorry for all the trouble. It's fine. There was nothing Amain could do but smile bitterly at Mahira's curt answer. Mahira had only offered to play nurse because she felt guilty. It definitely didn't mean that she genuinely wanted to spend time with Amain. He was sure of that. She was already talking with a boy she barely knew and alone in his apartment no less. That she would make sure there were no misunderstandings about how she felt was only natural. For the time being, I brought you the medicine that was on top of your desk. It's better to take it with something in your stomach. Are you hungry at all? Mahira asked gently. Mm, a little bit, Amain answered. Oh really? Well, in that case, I made some rice porridge, so you're welcome to have some. Huh, you made it yourself? Is there anyone else here but me? If you don't want it, I'll eat it all alone. No, I'll eat it. Please let me eat it. 
Amain had never imagined Mahiru preparing a homemade meal for him. For a moment, he was caught off guard. Frankly, he had no idea whether Mahiru even knew how to cook, but he'd never heard rumors of her failing cooking class, so he was fairly confident it wouldn't be awful. Although Mahiru looked surprised at Amain's sudden bow and insistence that he would eat her food, she nodded before handing him the thermometer that was sitting on the side table. I'll bring it to you, so take your temperature first. Okay, Amain said, taking the thermometer out of its sleeve. He began unbuttoning his shirt, and Mahiru quickly turned away. Do it after I leave the room, please. There was a slight rise in her voice, and Amain spied that the girl's pale cheeks were tinged red. Amain hadn't thought twice about taking off his shirt in front of her. He didn't consider it anything to worry about, but Mahiru was clearly flustered. Perhaps she wasn't accustomed to seeing much skin. Mahira's alabaster cheeks were faintly rosy, and she kept her blushing face turned away, trembling. Even the tips of her ears appeared to be changing hue, making her shyness almost palpable. Ah, I think I kind of understand why all the other boys are always saying how cute she is. Amain had never denied that Mahiro was very pretty, but he'd also never had any special feelings for her beyond a commonplace appreciation for her gentle beauty. He had looked at her like something akin to a work of art and had been content to admire her like one would a distant masterpiece. Mahiru wasn't some far-off thing anymore, though. She was in his apartment, looking slightly flustered and very shy. In that moment, Amain saw her as a girl and not some idol, and it was strangely adorable. The two didn't have the kind of relationship where Amain could just up and say that he thought Mahiru looked cute, however. It would probably just come across as weird if he tried which was why he kept his impressions to himself. Well then, do you think you could go get the rice porridge? He asked. Why you don't have to tell me, Mahira answered dismissively. I'll be right back. She turned and made a swift exit, her footsteps pattering away. It took Mahira some time to leave, maybe because she was trembling or maybe because of all the clutter. Probably the latter. After vacantly watching her go, Amain wondered again how things had turned out this way and let out a soft breath that was not quite a sigh. Well, I guess she just feels guilty over what happened. Normally, it would be unthinkable to follow a stranger into his apartment. It was too dangerous, she could be attacked or something. Mahira taking such a chance on Amain must have meant she was worried about him. Maybe his apparent lack of interest helped put her at ease. Either way, Amain didn't think it mattered. He was certain Mahira was only helping him out of a sense of obligation. Amain's mind, still slightly delirious with fever, continued to wander as he waited. Then came a hesitant knock at the door. I brought the porridge. At the sound of Mahira's concerned voice from the next room, Amain remembered again that he had loosened his clothing in order to take his temperature. I haven't taken my temperature yet, he called back. I thought I told you to take it while I was out of the room, though, sorry, I spaced out. Amain apologized meekly and stuck the thermometer in his armpit. After a few moments, it let out a muffled electronic beep. When he yanked it out and held it up to look at the screen, it showed a temperature of 38.3 degrees Celsius. It wasn't bad enough to go to the hospital, but it was still pretty high. Okay, I'm finished, Amain said as he put his shirt back on. Mahira entered with obvious apprehension, carrying a tray with a lidded bowl resting on it. She looked relieved, probably because Amain had fixed his clothes. What was your temperature? she asked. 38.3. I'll be better after I take some medicine and get some more sleep. Over-the-counter medicine only treats the symptoms and won't eliminate the virus itself, you know. You need to rest properly and let your immune system do its job. Such harsh scolding, even if it was coming from a place of concern, embarrassed Amain. Mahira sighed in exasperation and placed the tray and bowl on the side table, then opened the lid. Inside was rice porridge with pickled plums. It looked severely watered down, maybe 70% porridge to 30% water. Perhaps Mahira had done that intentionally because she'd thought it'd be easier on a main stomach. She'd likely added the plums because of their reputation as being good for fighting colds. The dish wasn't steaming, but it gave off a faint warmth. A main guessed that Mahira hadn't brought it straight from the stove but had instead made sure to let it to cool down first. Ignoring Amain as he stared at the porridge, Mahira ladled some into a smaller bowl with a clearly practiced hand. She had broken the pickled fruit up a bit for him and had apparently even neatly removed the pits. The red of the plums and the white of the rice mixed easily. Here you go. It shouldn't be too hot. M.M., thank you. Mahira gave Amain a puzzled look as he received the bowl, but then he merely stared at the porridge while his spoon hovered over it. What is it, you want me to feed you? 
Sorry, but that's not on the menu, Mahiro asserted. Nobody asked for that, okay? It's just. So I guess you can cook, too, huh? Amain asked. I live alone, so of course I can. The girl's words stung, a heavy reminder of Amain's own domestic failures. But before you learn to cook, you should learn to clean up your room, Fujimiya. Yes, ma'am. Mahira had quickly and thoroughly put him in his place. Amain grumbled quietly and scooped up some of the porridge, stuffing the spoon into his mouth in a bid to end the conversation. The flavor of the lightly salted rice spread across his tongue as he ate the porridge. The mellow sourness of the pickled plums pulled it all together. It was truly a dish with a perfect balance of flavors. Amain didn't like pickled plums that were too salty, but these had a milder taste and a bit of sweetness. They were actually a favorite of his. Often, he liked to top green tea rice with pickled plums. It's good. Thanks for saying so. Though, really, once you've tasted one rice porridge, I think you've probably tasted them all. Mahira's answer appeared indifferent, save for the very slightest beginnings of a smile. Without meaning to, Amain found himself staring at the beautiful girl's relieved expression. Something about it seemed quite different from the more outgoing smile he occasionally caught her wearing at school. Fujimiya? Mahira asked. Sorry, it's nothing, he answered. Amain thought it a shame that such a beautiful smile had been so fleeting, though he kept the musing to himself. Instead, he shoveled spoonful after spoonful of porridge into his mouth. Anyhow, you rest today. And make sure to replenish your fluids. If you need to wipe away sweat, use this. I put water into your wash bowl, so make sure to wet it and wring it out before wiping, okay? After Amain had eaten, Mahiru diligently prepared an unopened sports drink, readied the bowl of water, and laid out a towel and spare cooling sheets. All had been carefully placed on the side table in Amain's bedroom. There was no way Mahiru was going to stay over at the home of a boy she barely knew. Amain wouldn't have stood for it if she'd tried. Thus, Mahira had prepared everything Amain could have needed while he rested, and he was grateful for her diligence, though he stared at her the whole time she got everything ready. This is an awful lot just to repay a favor. Once this is over, I guess we won't have much reason to interact. It's a one-off thing, a freak occurrence, that's all. Well, since we won't be talking ever again, I guess it's all right to ask about that thing I want to know. Whether from the medicine or his nap, Amain's head felt clearer, though he was still exhausted. Hey, there's something I've been wondering, he started. What is it? Mahira turned to look at him from where she was setting up all the essentials he'd need. Why were you sitting out in the rain? Did you have a fight with your boyfriend or something? The strange behavior that had kicked off this whole chain of events had been on Amain's mind since he'd first noticed it. Mahira had been rocking back and forth on a swing in the pouring rain. What could she have been doing there? It was precisely because Amain had been curious about Mahira's slight resemblance to a lost child that he'd offered her his umbrella in the first place. He'd never discovered why she'd been out there in the storm to begin with, however. Amain had thought Mahira had been waiting for someone, so he'd guessed that there was a boy she was dating, even wondering if perhaps she and her boyfriend had gotten into an argument. In response to Amain's question, Mahira looked at him as if she was fed up. Sorry, but I don't have a boyfriend, and I have no plans to get one, she replied. Huh? Why? Amain asked almost unconsciously. Let me ask you, why did you assume I was dating someone? With how popular you are, I thought you'd have at least one or two boyfriends. Something about this back and forth made Mahira seem much more like a normal girl to Amain. She was kind but strong-willed. To other people, though, he was sure she seemed quite different. Mahira was a beautiful girl who was tidy, sweet, quiet, and humble. Her pretty face, so lovely that she was often called an angel, turned heads wherever she went, and her body was petite but possessed abundant curves. The briefest sight of her instilled a strange, momentary feeling of wanting to protect her. That quality, combined with her excellent sense of style, made her an object of desire for many a schoolboy. On top of all that, her grades kept her at the top of her class, and she was an all-around excellent athlete. What's more, Amain had just learned firsthand that she was good at cooking, too. That certainly wouldn't hurt her popularity. Just one glance was enough to know there must have been plenty of guys who were after her, and Amain knew for a fact that quite a few of his own classmates had romantic feelings for Mahira. She could have had her pick of the litter, and it hadn't occurred to him that she might not be seeing anyone. That was what Amain had meant when he'd said that thing about one or two boyfriends, but the moment she'd heard those words, Mahira's expression had stiffened, if only for a moment. I don't have a boyfriend, and what's more, 
I'm not the kind of girl who would keep the company of several boys at once. It's absolutely out of the question. Mahira's eyes were so cold, they sent a shiver down a main spine. He realized immediately that he'd stepped on some kind of social landmine. It might have been because of his sickness, but he felt a chill pass over him, and the room seemed drafty all of a sudden. Sorry, that's not what I meant. I apologize, Amain said. No, I'm sorry for getting fired up. Mahira bowing her head seemed to disperse the cold, tense atmosphere of the room. More than being fired up, Mahira's icy reply to Amain's question had been like a blizzard, though he knew better than to point that out. Anyway, that's not what was going on at all. I was just trying to cool my head a bit. And I really am sorry that you caught a cold because you were worried about me, Mahiro explained. It's fine. I mean, it was my decision, after all. I feel kind of guilty about all this, actually. I only gave you the umbrella as a spur-of-the-moment kind of thing. I'll try not to bother you once this is all over. Amain was sure that Mahira was only there to help out of some sense of obligation, but when she heard what he had to say, she blinked a few times and gave him a curious look. It must have intrigued her to hear that he wouldn't be troubling her again. We don't really have any reason to interact, so it's not like it'll be a big deal. I mean, even if you're the most beautiful girl in our grade, and a genius, and everyone calls you an angel, I wasn't trying to hook up with you, I swear. You don't think that this was some kind of scheme or something, do you? Amain inquired. Mahira looked away a little awkwardly. A bitter smile spread across her lips, as if she'd been waiting for Amain to say those exact words. Finally, he realized that she wasn't just acting cagey. Mahira had probably wound up in that sort of situation a few times before. A guy trying to get in with a beautiful girl by making her feel indebted was, unfortunately, not unheard of. It explained why Mahira had been so wary of Amain that day in the rain. She hadn't been upset at him, she'd just been trying to protect herself. It must be so irritating. Being bothered by guys you don't even like, Amain said. Well, that's true, but, Mahira's voice trailed off. Called it, quipped Amain, a little surprised to hear her admit it. So the quiet, charming, model student, the one everybody makes a big fuss. Over, the one everybody calls an angel, does have things she doesn't like. Why, she even gets annoyed from time to time, just like the rest of us mortals. The thought gave Amain the sudden impression that he was seeing the real Mahira for the first time. Unfortunately, the way she glared back at Amain seemed to suggest that she was really regretting having ever met him. It looked like she resented him for making her reveal how she really felt. Further proof that the angelic honor student has real emotions hidden deep down, Amain thought. I don't really see the problem with that, admitted Amain. Actually, I'm relieved. It's nice to hear that the angel finds that stuff just as annoying as normal humans. Please stop calling me that. Mahira obviously hated the title others had given her. With disapproval in her eyes, she continued to gaze at Amain. Even her displeasure seemed interesting to Amain, who smiled again and said, Not to worry, I won't bother you again without a good reason. Mahira's eyes opened wide as if his declaration had caught her by surprise. With the faintest whisper of a smile crossing her lips, she bowed sharply and left. Amain lay in bed, staring vacantly up at the ceiling while thinking about Mahiro. Even though the medicine had taken effect, he was, unsurprisingly, still feeling sluggish. If he relaxed, sleep would surely claim him in no time at all. He closed his eyes and reflected on the events of the day. No one would ever believe him if he told them that he'd been nursed back to health by an angel with a surprisingly sharp tongue. The day's events were a secret shared only by Amain and Mahiro. It feels kinda weird to call it a secret. It's more like it'd be a real pain to explain the whole story. It's just easier not to tell anybody, that's all, Amain reasoned. As he slowly lost consciousness, Amain told himself that, when tomorrow came, he and Mahiro would be nothing more than mere acquaintances again.